We are always very careful to make sure that we grab any of that kind of stuff. Another, there's nothing really there. Yes, my name is Robert Mann, R O B E R T M A N N. I'm a forensic anthropologist and then I'm also the director of the Forensic Science Academy for JPAC. Interesting trips around the world and things like that. And before that, I worked at uh, when the gun turret was raised, there were the remains of two sailors in there, and the other 14 of the 16 missing have never been found. Big nasal spine right here. This means when you look at the features of the skull, we know this is a white individual because the nasal, the nose, uh, nasal opening here is very narrow and very tall. This little spine of bone right here is very prominent, typical of whites, typical of whites. These large nasal bones that you can grab hold of with your fingers like this, that's very typical of a white individual, caucasoid. When we talk about sex of the individual, this forehead, sloping forehead, that's a male. So we've got no, no, no question about it. This is a white male, and it's a young white male because we can tell by the development of the teeth and the growth caps in the skeleton. A very prominent nasal spine here. But one thing that we do have that's different and it's very difficult to see in this model is there is a round spot right here in the teeth. And it's a little semicircle on the top and a semicircle on the bottom. When you put the teeth together, it looks like this. And what would that be? That's a pipe stem groove. Back in the Civil War, a lot of sailors were smoking pipes. They were smoking these clay pipes that were very abrasive. So they put this clay pipe between their teeth, sit there and they grind on it. After a while, it acts like sandpaper. And it wears a groove in the top teeth and in the bottom teeth. So something that we know about this individual, not so much from the bones, and not that these bones are talking to us saying, I was a pipe smoker, but we have evidence in his teeth. There's no doubt about it. This individual smoked a pipe. Again, we look at the forehead, the frontal bone, it slopes backwards. That's a male. All the features are male. And what we actually can tell from this individual is this is somebody who was in his 30s, could be 30 to 40 years old. So what we have is a 17 to 24 year old white male and we have a 30 to 34 year old white male. And that short list included how many 17 to 24 year old white males were there? Short list for this individual, how many 30 to 40 year old white male who were five foot seven, they were the same height, who were five foot seven were there missing out of the 16? We got it down to two. Hopefully we'll, we'll find out someday when we actually identify these individuals. If we get photographs of them, that would be so cool to do and make the comparison. So we're hopeful, but we don't know what these two individuals look like. The last side I actually excavated, um, but you can see 50 cal, and you can't give any military issue that. The dog has a military issue. But now and my first name is Danang McKay. First name D-A-N-A-N-G. M-C-K-A-Y, Command Senior Enlisted Leader. JPEC's mission is to uh, send out teams. Well, it's, it's a multi-phase mission where we do investigations, recovery, uh, and identification of fallen warriors from our nation's past conflicts. The importance of, the, of recovering of our fallen warriors from past, past uh, conflicts is to let the nation know, the international community know, that the United States has made a commitment that once we put someone in harm's way and uh, they're either missing or they're killed in action, that we have a resolve to uh, come back and uh, return them back to their families. It gives the family closure. Um, I think it also gives the war fighter a sense of comfort to know that no matter what happens, that the nation hasn't forgotten them and that we will return them back home with honor. All of our J Packers have the same mentality that every mission is an important mission and there's there's not one for me that stands out as more important as the other. Just the fact that we are able to support that mission is, is what's important. What I would like people to know is that we're here and um, that, that we're committed to the ideal of bringing home our fallen. And it doesn't matter if, if that happened uh, for World War II, uh, if it'll happen for future conflicts, that we'll always be here and we've made a resolved commitment to say, uh, we'll, we'll bring you home.